Sometimes life lets you down, and you feel that you are done. You just want a morning run because the fun is so gone. But sometimes life makes you proud when you look far and wide, when you leave the pain behind and see the brighter side. TNC gives you inspiration. TNC. Your passion, TNC, starts your transformation. TNC helps you see the new you. The new channel. The views, opinions, and insights expressed in the following show are those of the hosts, producers, guests, and viewers. They do not necessarily reflect the position of the channel. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to the new channel. We are here to help you see the new you. This is Natog Bayani and welcome to the world premiere of the family business. Welcome again to the family business. This is our world premiere tonight. Uh, today we will be having our two guests coming from uh, families in business that they also own. Um, one is, of course, Marvin Tio Lim and of uh, the Mega Global Corporation. And later we will have uh, Jacob Kabochan of Pandayan Bookshop and Phil Bars. So we'll go right into it. Uh, let's welcome our guests today. Um, let's welcome Mr. Marvin Tio Lim. Um, I'll just give you a little introduction. Good afternoon, Marvin. Good welcome afternoon, to... Nato. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'll just give a, uh, an introduction of uh, Marvin. So Marvin Tio Lim is uh, the Chief Growth and Development Officer of Mega Global uh, Corporation, uh, well, better known as Mega Sardines. He was able to transform the organization from a one-brand um, a consumer company to a four-brand consumer company, and he's had he's really transformed the uh, the whole organization into really um, being one of the most, if not number one, brand in in the Philippines for sardines. No, so despite the very short time that he's uh, been active in the business, later we will know more about that. Um, we will we will get right straight into the interview. Uh, We'll ask Marvin, of course, uh, some questions, and then uh, please, Marvin, feel free to to uh, give your answers to the question. Uh, today, today we're going to speak about, uh, of course, here on the family business about uh, family legacy. So, um, and I think you're in the second generation, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Yes, um, I'm uh, the youngest of five siblings. The youngest so of five. Started this is 45 years ago. 
So, wow. So, 45 years ago, was it already called Mega Global Corporation at that no, time? No, actually, it was initially called uh, Wilmar, uh, standing for William and Mary Lou, which are the first names of my parents. parents. So, then we transformed to Seagold. Then in 1995, uh, it was called Mega Fishing Corporation when we incorporated in Zamboanga. All right. So, uh, first of all, um, we'd like to congratulate you. Uh, on on your third child, ba? Yes, sir. Third? Uh, right. I have a, a daughter. Third child, a little day lang. So amid this yeah. pandemic, at least made blessings pa rin kay God. Yeah. So thank you very much for that. All right. It's go. It's so. It's so. It's a really a blessing to have uh, kids. No, these are. This is going to be the third generation <laughs> of, of the business. Yes, uh, pang so, 16. <laughs> Ah, 16th po. All right. So, uh, again, congratulations. I'll go straight into the questions now, Marvin. Sure, sure. So, like, you can, like, um, tell the story of the family legacy. So, for, first is, how is your family business doing? And what were the challenges that you were facing during the pandemic? Well, uh, of course, as you know, we are essential goods. So, our business has been positively impacted by the situation. Although we are not happy because of it. Um, uh, so initially what we first did was we made sure that we had our goods available at all times to all the LGUs. So this, um, uh, this really entailed us that we had to step in and work with the professionals that we had in the corporation to make sure that the free flow of goods uh, from Sumbuanga and to other, our other distribution centers were there. So this required our uh, immediate attention uh, we first took care of our employees. We made sure that they they felt secure themselves. We mm -hmm. gave them uh, food packs. Uh, we made sure that they felt safe for their job. We ensured them that even we, if it is ECQ, they would still have jobs remaining. So once we took care of that situation, uh, employees felt safe. Employees started to give back, give more to the company. So we also pledged an amount to give to donate to. Uh, the COVID situation here in the Philippines. So we're trying to do everything that we can to make sure that uh, because of the blessings that we've have, we've gotten that being positively impacted, we also we also share that blessings to the people. So yes, uh, we're one of the select few who have been positively impacted. So we're very fortunate of that. So, how many employees do you have at this point? Right now, we have around four thousand employees uh, nationwide. Oh, nice. So majority are in Sambuanga. Uh, the canning plants, and we have two canning plants there, and we have 88 fishing vessels in the Sulu Sea now. Yeah, so how have you survived and thrived through all of these? I mean, considering, of course, that uh, the impact, although it's really essential goods, I mean, uh, I myself am a, a village official, and, you know, sardines is like everybody. <laughs> Everybody was waiting for Ayuda. So how have you survived and tried to all of the, the, through this pandemic? Well, uh, we, we had to make sure that uh, kami mismo, the owners, mm -hmm. were uh, really in the ground, making sure that all the logistical requirements were met. No? Uh, mm -hmm. Kasi if we didn't step in, uh, we made our products uh, available. We ourselves posted uh, the availability and mayors left and right were calling us from different LGUs. So I think mm -hmm. that sense of entrepreneurial spirit in us enabled us to go down to the field and make sure that our goods were available. And because of that, I think uh, kung makikita mo yung mga memes sa mga ayuda, uh, yeah. puro may ang nabibigay. Uh, kasi yeah. at this time, na, napakaswerte rin uh, yung timing ng MECQ, uh, March. Yeah. So March was the start of the fishing season rin. So fishing oh. really happens. March to November 30. And this is the time we're in um, maraming fish catch as well. So we were very fortunate that the timing of the uh, pandemic hit us during March onwards. Because if it hit us sometime November, December, baka the whole sardine category na ubusan na ng stocks. So, yeah, so it was like a serendipity and it was right, just the right time, right? Yes, yes, oh, yes. Um, and they say that uh, I think the the medicine for COVID is sardines now. <laughs> <laughs> because well, everybody... It's the source of protein at 70 yeah, to 80 a can. And you can feed yes. a family of five. So you have to make sure you're healthy, you're nutritious. Uh, That's right. So, so yes, it can be. <laughs> but don't think... A lot of people survive because of uh, mega sardines and, you know, uh, sardines in general. And it, 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 I, I didn't realize that uh, that was the catch season. So 
Yes. Um, maybe you you can call it a blessing or something like that. No, that yes. at that particular moment in time when everybody needed uh, well ayuda for 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 the people, it was catch season. So fantastic. Yes. So can you tell us more about that? Like, uh, how is the cycle of? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, basically, we uh, we rest the fishing fleet uh, from December one to Feb twenty eight. Uh, this okay. is uh, the cycle so that the fish go down and reproduce so Take that there's one, sustainability yeah. in terms sure. of uh, our commercial fishing. Because if we just keep right. on catching and catching and catching, mm -hmm. the next two, three years, we will in the long run. So that sustainability right. is uh, from BFAR. It's uh, mandated by BFAR. All private commercial fishing companies abide by it. And uh, we make sure that uh, at least we have to do it next year. So mm -hmm. during March to November, we have to make sure that we build enough buffer stocks uh, for the off season. Yeah. So off season is really from uh, those those months, right? From December, or is it is it just a, a requirement of government that you have to rest uh, fishing from December to February? Yeah, it's a requirement, and at the same a time, we don't have season uh, for them. Yeah, they go lower, they reproduce. Okay. And the temperature is different, maalon. So, uh, nagkasak uh, sakto lang rin yung season na yun. Right. So, very interesting. Um, you know, it's it's like before um, noodles yata yung staple. Now it's really sardines because at sixteen, maybe sixteen, seventeen pesos, you 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 have a uh, like what you said, protein and everything. So, yes, that's correct. Can you tell us more about like uh, how your parents like started the business in terms of building a legacy for for the family? How how did they start? Uh, I mean, sure. so yeah. uh, our, our business is uh, forty five years old this year. No, my dad yeah. just seventy uh, last year. Uh, so he started the business when he was twenty four, twenty five years old. He started with one fishing boat. Mm -hmm. uh, then he built it up to become three, four, five, six, and eventually he had a lot of ups and downs. I think mm -hmm. there's this one uh, story that he kept on telling us that uh, four out, of, uh, three out of his four vessels sank uh, wow. during the storm in the 1980s. So he was uh, really back to zero. So he asked the employees, "Are we going to continue or not continue?" So they persevered and they built up again. So they really had it. Uh, they really rose from the ranks, rose from uh, nothing, then uh, really continued to build it up one brick at a time. So that's why mm -hmm. uh, the legacy and the, the teachings of my father to us are always about thriftiness, being uh, being sure that you are conservative in how you do business and you take things slowly. Uh, make sure your name integrity is there. So he is a very, very uh, in, uh, good businessman, I would say, of course, uh, but mm -hmm. he's also very slow. He's very patient. He likes to take time and making decisions, of course, mm -hmm. of which uh, I, uh, the second generation, being the youngest, am the, am the complete opposite of that. I like to make rash decisions. I, I, I like to make quick decisions. I like to mm -hmm. get, uh, get things in action. So sometimes yeah. we butt heads, but uh, the beauty of it is if you can create that symbiosis of that new and old generation, and that's mm -hmm. the best type of relationship and flourishment to have in the business or environment. How, how do you find the balance to that? For example, uh in sinasabi natin, uh, of course, the founders are really old school, but you know, they they know old tricks that really work. I mean, in the past, now, um, like you, you were educated in Ateneo, and I mean, how does this really strike a balance in the family, for example, when when you present your ideas? Because you know, we're discussing family business, and you know, we know that in family businesses there are dynamics that sometimes. Uh, you argue, no, just like any other family. How were you able to strike the balance? Well, just like any other family, uh, one would have siblings. So all of us, all yeah. five of us, had our own contribution in our own time. No, uh, my right. eldest brother uh, had it tough. Uh, he experienced also, like my sister, they experienced the hardship of really starting from nothing. Mega was just started the brand in 1999. Uh, they they could barely find any buyers for our brand and they really started from uh, nothing just consignment trying to plead people take our products and eventually grew it and grew it and my other brother professionalized the of the company by bringing in more professionals so we i think in each and every
every stage where we were coming from. So at, when I came in in 2015, uh, the company was relatively professional already. We were already uh, at the number one spot. All we had to do was uh, increase that market share and make sure that we pump out more new products, make sure that our people uh, are more qualified and are more talented. So uh, I think um, it, we, it, it came in stages. It did not come overnight. And at the same time, then one crucial thing was the openness of our father to change. And uh, that openness, of course, especially coming from a first generation startup uh, builder, uh, usually that doesn't happen overnight as well. So uh, we had to call it, call it, call it. Uh, we had to make a lot of uh, initiatives in terms of uh, uh, introducing him to other people. Then I think this was in 2014, he finally decided to study Harvard OPM uh, for three years at the age of 66. So right. that was a big break for him because when he came back after three years, he felt like a really refreshed. He, he got the world's eye view of how to conduct business. So mm -hmm. I think uh, being exposed to a lot of these uh, external uh, opportunities uh, mm -hmm. helped him open his mind. And at the same time, it allowed the second generation to make more changes. But uh, one of the big key things that we've done, even from before, to help mm -hmm. us is of course um, sometimes if if you listen to family you would have biases already so we have always have gotten consultants to help us in our board now i think we have around eight consultants and advisors to help us all throughout our uh, operations uh, whether it be marketing sales mm -hmm. or sem we have consultants and if we ask the consultants what's the right thing to do usually they would tell the board honestly and they, they wouldn't have any baggage attached so we use the help of those consultants to convince the board our parents my dad what yeah. change is needed and we listen to those because uh, these are professionals who've been in the industry for years and years i see so for example um from one single brand uh now you have four brands right is that correct uh, yes we tell have more about this yeah uh, no, our flagship brand is mega sardines we are the market leader uh, nationwide. Then we also have Mega Tuna. Uh, we launched our tuna line in 2017 uh, on the proposition of being 100% pure tuna without any extenders. We also, uh, in 2018, we also entered into the canned vegetable line called Mega Prime. So this is corn, mushroom, green peas, garban sauce, anything that you can find in the Filipino pantry, that would uh, be our objective to be in. And um, of course, for example, going into a, a vegetable, ca is that canned or is that uh, in? Yes, it's canned vegetables. So we also vegetables. have uh, vermicelli noodles, we have sauces. So uh, medyo nag diversify na kami in terms of product uh, availability and uh, offerings. Yeah, because apparently when you have sardines, you, you need noodles as well. Yes. Yeah, because yes. they mix it, right? And, and yes. it's a new variant. So. Um, it's really you call what do you call that a forward integration of the, of the, yes, the, so we, the household, products, right? we make sure our products are complementary to each other so everything that we launch is usually for the benefit uh, for yes. the Filipinos meaning better packaging better taste healthier options so we always launch products with a unique selling proposition that is not yet there in the market so the vegetables are locally available and these are well, coming uh, from farmers? The thing is, there are some vegetables really uh, in the world, I think. Um, mm -hmm. For example, mushrooms. Uh, majority yeah. of the world's canned mushrooms come from China. Majority yeah. of the uh, world's uh, corn, canned corn, comes from Thailand. So these are imported products that we bring in from uh, the world sources of these. Yeah. So being a family business and uh, being... Uh, a new father again. <laughs> how how would you share that to the third generation? I mean, how would you th share the legacy to the third generation? I well, mean, yeah. How old is the oldest ap uh, apo of? Uh, now of I think dad? the oldest apo is seventeen. So 17, it's yeah. we're we're already in discussions in trying to bring him into the or, uh, organization when it comes right. to meetings. Uh, we're trying to um, get him to interview the founder. So mm -hmm. I think uh, we're in that stage where we're, in, we're trying to bring them in, expose them early, uh, mm -hmm. not necessarily work for our business, but expose them to the story, uh, expose them to the way we work, how, because mm -hmm. of course there's a big gap in terms of age, there's a big gap in terms That's of right. values. Mm -hmm. So uh, as much as we can, as early as we can, we try to bridge that uh, through maybe uh, experiential learning and all that. Yeah. So. Um... We're 
uh, this is this is a one hour program so I'd like to get as much as I can from from our guests so uh, I understand you're also the president of the Philippine Association uh, Association of National Advertisers with Ken and Aye and uh, a lot of our friends Ila Blen um, how how do you think this is helping you as a, as a, as a brand as well well and uh, course, uh, overall I mean uh, yeah. how are you also helping Pana in terms of uh, well, the advocacy you know, the, the, the primary reason why we joined Pana a few years ago was that we needed more expertise in terms of how to advertise we needed more expertise mm -hmm. on how to deal with the AAC which is very very strict so yes. that's when we joined and we learned the ropes and we learned from good people. Now, now um, I, I decided to help the board last year so that I can be more connected and also know the inner workings of how advertising works because that was primarily what my job is, sales and marketing. And right. uh, fortunately enough, they also elected me to become their president this year. Of course, I wish I, 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 I agreed to because of mm -hmm. the learnings that I would be able to get. So my personal belief is always put yourself in a position that you're uncomfortable with so that you can grow and grow. So in Pana, uh, we're doing a lot of activities right now, particularly mm -hmm. when COVID uh, struck us, we had to shift all, all our GMMs online. And yes, I'm mm -hmm. working with a, a very, very good board uh, this year. So uh, it's relatively uh, easy with them because Pana is a 62-year-old association. So they've already gotten their um, uh, plans and programs in place. It's more of just executing, more of just uh, making, uh, making it more future proof, uh, harmonizing yeah. it with the younger generation. And uh, now we have a uh, awards coming up. It's called the Panata Awards. It's uh, mm -hmm. uh, usually we reward uh, our judges uh, pick who are the best uh, ads to, that communicate uh, for different categories. We also have uh, an array of different activities that we try to help our uh, brand members uh, through either uh, keynote speakers or economic forecasts or data trends. So it's really an association that I'm proud to be with and I'm learning a lot from even our brands, personal brands learn a lot from uh, because uh, in this time, uh, you really need to band together no matter if you're competitors or if you're not competitors, any private business with a brand really needs to band together, uh, together with public, uh, DOH and other agencies to make sure to raise awareness and to make sure that we can bounce back uh, from the situation. Because if we just keep on finger pointing, uh, I don't think anything's going to happen, right? So we just have to do our own little part and try to build one by one. Yeah, that's that's really fantastic because um, I'm also one of the co-founders of Bounce Back PH, and I, I know you've helped a lot of people, uh, uh, a lot of SMEs uh, in that in that endeavor. So, well, um, we really have a short time. Uh, later, we will have Jacob, but I'd like to ask you, Marvin, before before I let you go, like um, in terms of uh, both practical and inspirational advice. What would you advise families in business now who are suffering from the crisis? I mean, what would you tell them? Like, in your own experience, uh, even uh, uh, as youthful as you are, what can you tell these families in business that are really aspiring to be a mega sardines or a mega global corporation someday? How, how, what can you tell them? Uh, right now, they're watching. I, I hope. Um, what can you impart uh, something inspirational and maybe something practical? Well, uh, I can only um, share what we've been doing in our family and how we have uh, grown this family business together. So we always, always, always abide by our values, what the company stands for, what our family stands for, no matter what the situation is, we go back to those values because it's that values that really determine who we are, who we are now in crisis, who we, who we are in flourishments. So if you stick to those values, if you stick to integrity or whatever value that you hold dear, which ours is uh, particularly integrity and family, if you stick to those, that will really invite from you each and every day and make sure that that uh, sort of values ex really uh, cascades down to your people. And they would appreciate that. And they would appreciate that authentic, uh, authentic sincerity of that you, you are displaying the values for them. So my practical advice is like, uh, you have to have a short-term goal. 
uh, meaning because of this COVID situation, but never, never lose sight of your long-term goal um, uh, because things will bounce back. Uh, things will come back to normal. And uh, once you panic too much now, you lose sight of your long-term goal. Uh, next thing you know, everything might be in shatter. So, and lastly, uh, very, very practical, um, business is business and family is family. Nothing can ever replace family. Business, money, everything else can be replaced, but family cannot. And a lot of people fight over business and, and the family suffers. And that shouldn't be the case. So if we can really, really go back to the basics of being, having that relationship, good relationship with our family members, then it's much, much more easier to expand and to take care of the business. But without that good relationship, the business will eventually falter. So really take care of the family dynamics and relationships first. Well, uh, Marvin, I, I can't, uh, I can't thank you enough for, uh, I hope we have more time to discuss this maybe in another episode. Um, sure. I, I, I've met uh, some of your brothers as well, right? And I remember that um, one of your brothers was like chief, uh, something special like officer. value. Uh, yeah, special <laughs> officer for, for, for your value, right? So, yes, uh, yes. I mean, it's, it's not like every other business that, you get you that's articulated um in some businesses diba, it's just it's all it's all pure business but here i noticed with with your company that you're very strong with values with uh, being god-centered and this is really inspirational because at the end of the day uh we can bring money to to wherever we're going so well with that uh thank you for inspiring uh our viewers uh we hope to see you again we hope to we we pray for your success in pana because uh we've been with uh, pana for a long time when at the time i was with the outdoor advertising association we worked closely with ie and uh, digna and a lot of people pana when the ad board was still alive <laughs> so this is some time ago a few years back so um i think young blood is really needed for for the yes. association and we're we're happy for Mega Global Corporation that you're there. Your your brothers are there, and uh, we hope to see that uh, Mega will still be here for a long, long time. Thank so you very with much, that, Marvin. Uh, I'd like to thank you. Hope to see you again uh, post COVID or <laughs> in yes. person. Uh, I just like to yeah, thank yeah. you and yeah, thank you very thank much you for Sato on your uh, premiere show. So I wish yes. you success in the TNC. It's a very, very good idea. So I wish you all success yeah. and uh, hopefully we can uh, help bounce back everyone together. Yes. Thank you very much. On behalf of TNC and of course, my own firm, Premier Family Business Consulting, we'd like to thank you for joining us. So with that, uh, thank you, Marvin Tio Lim, uh, the Chief um, Growth and Development Officer of uh, uh, Mega Global Corporation or otherwise known as Mega Sardines, no, uh, the number one brand, I think, here in here in the Philippines. Thank you for helping a lot of people, also with your advocacy. So with that, um, our viewers, we'd like to, well, we'd like to thank the viewers that we have right now. We have Alex, Mon Alex Montañez from OAAP, the o OHAP, out, out of Home Association of the Philippines, Mr. Jerry Yao from the Philippine Marketing Association. We have a... Uh, uh, Juan Lu Lunaria, we have uh, Lee O'Brien uh, who's watching the show with us. So before we go to our next um, guest, our next guest is of course no less than Jacob Cabochan of um, um, Phil Bars and Pandayan Bookshop and also a senior consultant of Premier Family Business Consulting. Uh, we'd like to go into this break and when we come back, we'll have uh, Jacob Cabochan with us. Thank you.
Welcome to the new channel. We are here to help you see the new you. I'm Nato Agbayani, and this is the world premiere of the family business. So welcome back. Welcome to the new channel. We are here to help you see the new you. I'm Nato Agbayani, and this is the maiden issue, the world premiere of the family business. So welcome to TNC. We'd like you to watch the new shows, The Big Picture, HR Hotline, of course, The Family Business, The Fourth Project, Usapang Beauty, Turn, The Home Buyer, The Puppet Stories, TNC Marketplace, YOLO, uh, The Talk, After Shift with uh, Chino and Tria, uh, Trisha, Win Within, and The Town Hall, of course, uh, our specials, One Day. So with that, uh, we'd like to thank you again for watching the world premiere of The Family Business. This is Nato Agbayani, your host. Uh, now we would like to bring in our second guest. Uh, his name is Jacob Kabochan. So there's Jacob. Hi, Jacob. Great Hello, to see you God. again. Good to see you. All right. So, all right. So I'd just like to introduce Jacob. Uh, he is the third generation. He, uh, their family owns Pandayan Bookshop. He's in the third generation. He's currently holding the position of director for operations uh, of Pandayan. And recently, he acquired um, uh, Phil Bars. If, if you're uh, a comics fan, uh, Phil Bars is, of course, uh, a, big, a, big, uh, uh, a big network of uh, different different. DC and Marvel Comics, no stuff like that. And uh, if you're also an anime fan, they have a lot of um, a lot of uh, characters that uh, that's being sold online right now. So, anyway, um, uh, Jacob is also the acting director of AFBDC. From uh, is that right? Ah, uh, before. Okay. Uh, he's also. Uh, he also graduated from, uh, of course, Ateneo de Manila University as man manya cum laude in management. He also holds a certificate of family business advising from the Family Firm Institute, which Premier Family Business Consulting is a member of. And uh, our CEO, John Ramos, is also part of the board uh, of uh, FFI. And also, he's... Uh, he was a former uh, family dynamics and counselor. Uh, counseling is a, was that head uh, Jacob of the Center for Family Ministries of the Ateneo Man uh, de Manila University. Oh, the Family Business Center before. Family Business Center. So thank you for that. Thank you for joining us, um, Jacob. Uh, it's uh, it's technically a long weekend for all of us, but uh, thank you for joining this world premiere of uh, the family business uh, with me as your host. So we'd like to go for uh, what was what did you think about about uh, what uh, Marvin Pugh Lim said from the lenses of a consultant? What do you think about what families in business are going through right now in this pandemic? I think um, he actually pointed out earlier and I think that was great a great insight from him about relationships. Yes. So uh, I think what's really needed now is uh, is strong relationships from like within the family, with the partners in the family business, with your employees. So I think that that's one of the things he highlighted early on about how strong the relationship is from the first and the second generation, hopefully even the third generation that he just said is other trying to actually include already. So, yeah. and he also pointed out he had good relationships with consultants, with professionals. But what I really like was that um, you, one of the first things they pointed out is even though they were, uh, they knew they would be positively impacted by the pandemic, one of the first things that they did was they actually made sure all of their employees felt safe. All of their employees felt um, that they knew they would be taken care of during this quarantine period. So that really speaks great length about family businesses that you really, really treat um, everybody like family. So I think that's one of their yeah. um, key strengths as a family business. It's like uh, they're an extension. They're Correct. an extension of the own fam of their own family, that you will family. So 
Um, this is just to give people an idea of uh, what the family business show is going to do. No? Um, every week, we will have a, a focus, a profile, let's say a personality, a family business owner, and a consultant uh, on the second portion of the show. This is so that we can like really teach people about how, how, how do family, families in business work and how, how, can, how can they really like, um, learn from the experiences and be inspired by the experiences of uh, certain families. So Jacob, uh, thank, you about, thank you for that. Now we'd like to, before, before I go on and uh, before you wear your consultant hat, I'd like, I'd like you to also share uh, uh, your own experience with like running Pandayan Bookshop and also Phil Bars, uh, being a, a family business owner yourself. I think you're the third generation, is that correct? Correct. For correct. Pandayan, for, yes. Well, technically, I'm the second for Pandayan, but our families, is, uh, we've started, we were in retailing since 1956. So my grandmother, wow. my Lola, started a supermarket in Kaloocan. So we grew from that. So yes. our family had different types of businesses in retail. So what, our family branch, we actually had uh, the school supplies and the bookshop business. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so Pandayan uh, has has been there for since when? 1993. 1993. Okay. So more than 25 years also. So uh, we're, well, it, it has been, the pandemic has been challenging for us. Like, for example, we're um, one of the businesses that we were required to be closed during the ECQ. So, mm -hmm. so again, I, I think um, what you really liked about Sir Marvin's um, talk was that he mentioned that really you really need to take care of uh, your people your relation the relationships basically so that's also what we did we actually made mm -hmm. sure um everybody felt safe everybody felt assured that they wouldn't uh, have a problem during ecq so that's one thing that we tried to do as well assure people that hey um we'll we'll, 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 we'll as much as we can we'll take care of you so that's what we did so uh, like in particular, how many ways are, are are you currently? I think you you have branches in the provinces, right? Also here right. in Manila. Yeah. Uh, and, we're working in the province. We have more than a hundred branches in the provinces, so that's where you can actually see Pandayan bookshops. Yeah, I remember um, my my daughter had to buy something special, and we couldn't find it in the regular books bookstore. So we went to Pandayan bookshop, and lo and behold, it was there. So it's like a specialty uh, bookshop and, you know, I mean, we, we've grown to having mega places like malls and everything. But, you know, I think the experience with the Pandayan bookshop is really homey and, you know, it's really cozy. And sometimes you look for these experiences. Now, so um, let, me, let me ask you, what do you think are the challenges uh, being faced by families now? I asked the question earlier with with uh, Marvin, but you in general, let me now ask you to wear your uh, family business consultant hat this time. What do you think is the most like significant problem they're suffering now, all the families in business? Well, currently I think um, Marvin, Sir Marvin actually pointed out one of the things that we, that I saw also happening in other businesses, in family, especially family businesses, is that, um, this pandemic has really caused a strain in relationships. So, mm. um, and one of the insights that I like to share with uh, with the viewers now is that, well, it's um, in a way, the pandemic would show how strong your relationships are existing during the pandemic. Like, if you mm. built up good relationships prior to COVID, prior to the pandemic, it would actually show during the pandemic. So how, how strong relationships were in, as a family, how you would decide. Basically, the pandemic would actually um, challenge that and show which businesses actually had good relationships and which businesses did not have good relationships. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, one of the ma major problems in pandemic is that you, you, you don't get to get together. Um, yeah, so yeah, you're... Yeah. Uh, or, Usually in family business or even in families, one of the strengthening factors, the one, one things that actually make you closer are your, like, for example, every weekend you would get together, you would talk to each other, you would bond. 
which basically in the pandemic, you couldn't do that. You couldn't um, strengthen relationships during the pandemic in the usual way that you know. Like yeah. you, won't, you, you won't have family dinners. Um, <laughs> right. Together for birthdays. Like for example, I have, we had, I celebrated my, um, my son's first birthday. We actually just had a Zoom call for that because you can't get people, to get, you, you won't get together basically. And unfortunately that's the main mode that we're used to, usually comfortable uh, mm -hmm. or usually uh, that's what we do. That's what we know. Like you um, stay together, have dinner together. That's basically how you build relationships. So I think that's one thing that is very challenging now during the pandemic is that the usual ways that you build relationships, um, you can't do that anymore. And unfortunately, yeah. that's very challenging, especially if you didn't have good relationships before, mm -hmm. uh, it would be hard to actually strengthen them during the pandemic. You'd have to be, have creative ways. You have to think out of the box on how you'd actually reach out to people when you can't be physically present. So, yeah. so I think that's more difficult. Correct, it's very, very difficult. Very difficult. For families, right? So, and I, I think I'll actually uh, mention this early on as in family businesses. I see this not only just within the family, but also in business relationships. Like, for example, um, your relationship with your suppliers, with your employees, mm -hmm. basically how strong they were, it would be tested during the pandemic. So I, because I've seen a lot of posts, like people asking their employees, maybe it's time to sacrifice now because it's a pandemic. Um, it's time to basically be more giving, be more forgiving. Unfortunately, right. if you didn't have like what, I think that's what really great, what's great about uh, Mega Sardines was that if you didn't have that from the start, it would hard. It would be hard yeah. to suddenly have it during the pandemic. That's right. So like what's really good at Mega, and we actually, I, I was with you when we went to their office, the, right, the right. value there, that's what the, they really um, heightened the sense of family. They wanted to treat everybody's family. So, kaya nakatulong talaga sa kanila yon. Hindi yung, um, like, all of a sudden, because of a pandemic, you expect people now to sacrifice, you expect people to uh, become more close. I think kung hindi ganun ka before the pandemic, it would be hard to do it, lalo na ngayon, because you can't do, you can't you, you do the usual avenues on how you can reach out to people. Diba? Like, it's so impersonal if you talk via email or via, like, Zoom calls. Iba eh. right. So, and I think that's what, What's uh, what we see now in the pandemic is that those with good relationships, they're the one who would thrive during the pandemic. Though, and th these relationships were actually built upon um, not overnight, but usually before the pandemic, medyo ano na, tinabaho na nila yon. So yeah. that's what like I saw. What we have. Hmm. It's like um, it really takes a long process to to All build right. that family culture. I mean. Um, I've, I've seen you with uh, our colleagues like Teresa manage this uh, family culture building, and it really takes uh, time. No, I mean people don't don't arrive there overnight, and maybe that leads me to my next uh, question, Jacob. So, like, how can they really survive or thrive through this pandemic over the long time? Like, how can it be sustainable? How can the family businesses be? sustainable i mean you've been consulting for a lot of families in business and um i know there there have been so many cases no marami ng, marami ng types of families types of conflicts that have that uh, you've re been able to resolve and you've been able to help with uh in your stint in ateneo and also with the premier family business consulting so uh, I mean, what do you think are the ingredients that they need, what that family business need to really become sustainable uh, in this in this situation? We, we don't know how long this is going to last, right? Yeah. Correct, correct. I agree. Mm -hmm. So I think what, what you need to do is basically think as a family first to begin mm -hmm. with. Let's like start with there. Like, um, bakit ba tayo together? What do we need to do as a family first? And I think uh, this is a time when you have to be not attached to any particular business. Dahil nga, meron talagang business ngayon na no matter what you do, baka, you really, for one thing, you can't really open, so you can't really, or so if you if you view yourself as that business, if the family identifies too much as like, oh, galito kasi business namin, ito kasi alam namin, so ito gagawin that. And mm -hmm. I think it's time to detach yourself, like family tayo, family, and then you see all the opportunities immediately. You can't, be uh, very 
like short sighted na ito kasi yung business natin ngayon eh ito yung mm-hmm. time na you need to remove the family from the business and then view as a family or what can we do ano ba yung skills natin ano ba yung gusto natin maybe it's a time really now to think as a family and maybe have hard uh, you have to make difficult decisions now like anong business ba yung talagang okay maybe we should move away na from that business we should start another business so it's really it's a time now to really strengthen the family ties i think that's what family should do now is really talk about the family first and then yeah. the business syempre you need to survive but then you can't define your business as the existing business you might have it might be like you need to expand it siguro lana during this time mm-hmm. It's, it's no longer the same. So people really have to realize that, uh, Correct. well, in online, I've seen a lot of people really shift, like the, especially the restaurants. Uh, the, the guys we help in Bounce Back are also like, for example, I've seen many dark or cloud kitchens that are booming nowadays. And their businesses were not like that before. They, they were physical stores and now they're, they're changing and they're evolving. So... I think this this pandemic is really causing us to all uh, uh, restructure and develop digitally or whatever. No, so well. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you you can see the changes, right? And what have you observed, uh, Jacob? Like for example, in the families that you've served in the past few years, what what? Um, adjustments or pivots have have they been have they been doing well uh currently now what what i've seen is that um like you said so, some people have tried to tra- um, transform their business a lot of times i think a lot of businesses or family business now a lot of them are worried about especially if they're highly leveraged malaki utang nila parang dun yung maraming nakikita kong ano, very concerned right now because of the uncertainty right. because of the pandemic uh, but uh, I've seen that uh, a lot of people have managed in terms of because businesses would actually have certain tips already given that oh, you have to cut your expenses first, uh, manage overheads. So a lot of family businesses have been doing that. But mm-hmm. I think uncertainty, I think that's what's their main worry now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know a lot of businesses are confident that they don't want to do it, but they worry that all of future plans, like growth prospects, alam nila medyo kailangan mag-pause muna yon and focus on like um, just running the business for um, may- maybe survival, some of them, or like break even. Alam ko, yun yung target ngayon eh. Basta hindi malugi this year, ayun, okay na sila. Yeah. So that's what they're looking at. So, um, in terms of like being a family advisor, uh, family business advisor, what can you recommend like people to do at this point? Of course, there's the relationship side. Um, like what we said earlier, hindi naman yan overnight. Eh? That, that, that has to be developed uh, through a long process. And also it, it needs, the, it needs the, the help of like everybody, uh, all the stakeholders in the, in the family. Uh, right now, a lot of families in business are watching us. What do you think... Um, what advice would you give? Like I, I, I asked this question earlier from, from Marvin. What advice would you give families in business now to really, maybe not to pivot, but really just to become sustainable over the next few months, considering, considering the difficulties that we're having now? I think so. um, what I would really advise families is really uh, talk to one another, make mm-hmm. sure get the input from everyone. I think, especially sometimes we get caught up in the day-to-day. Ngayon kasi for sure maraming firefighting na nangyayari sa business. Like for us, right. diba, if you have like suddenly you have to quarantine certain people, hindi just pwede sila makawork. Diba? Meron mga right. ganito lang. Every day hindi mo alam eh na sino bang hindi mo makareport for work. Then suddenly you have to shut down this branch. You have to shut down this department because of what's happening. Mm-hmm. So, but, uh, but I think what my advice would be during this time then is that uh, I know day to day you have lots of firefighting, but it's time to step. You you can't forget to step back and talk to the family. Na mm-hmm. ano bang ano uh, ano bang plans natin as a family, and hopefully you try to discuss that. Get people on board, your family members, if they're part of the board, the entire board of directors, mo na um, lay out the plans. Like send ba tayo? Dal I think the, the temptation now is that we get overwhelmed during the firefighting daily that's happening. Is that 
like what Marvin, I, I really like, it's good that you invited uh, Marvin to be your first speaker is that he actually yeah. encapsulated well na maraming short-term ngayon, but you can't um, let go of your long-term goal. Ngayon, you right. have to find out now if your long-term girl, goal, sorry, long-term goal is still applicable. Gusto pa rin ba natin yun? Kaya pa rin ba given the current mm-hmm. scenario? How is it transformed? I think that's, we need to define that. Ayun siguro gawin ng family. If you have your current family vision now, it's time to revisit it. Tinan mo, oh, applicable ko ba ito? Ito ba ba yung direction na gusto natin puntahan given the, what's happening now? And yung short-term mo, syempre, yun, you need to set like short-term targets. But yeah. what I'm saying is that that's what I'm seeing also in our experience so that yung day-to-day, ma-overwhelm ka talaga because it's uncertain daily, may uncertainty ka araw-araw. Eh. So mm-hmm. you really have to have that time where you get everybody to talk about the long-term. Yeah. Okay, so Jacob, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us. Um, uh, it just so happened that the first person that came into my mind was Jacob Gabochan should be in the in the world premiere because uh, I, I I have a lot of respect for you also because you are um, uh, you've been there you've been in the family business consulting uh, business for. Uh, a long time and i think you've you've consulted for some of the top families in the philippines and um you you also were uh instrumental in helping premier family business consulting um when they started up right uh, that was practically 10 years ago so um i i i'd like to thank you for joining uh, i'd like to sh- to thank you for sharing all all your um, inputs on 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 the family business we just want to maybe next time around we can invite you again uh uh next week we'll have a different topic we'll have asset protection so maybe we will have a lawyer with us uh who's going to to help us with the discussion and then uh, uh a speaker who will have uh who has a lot of assets <laughs> because of uh, of the topic no? anyway um thank you again jacob we'd like to we'd like to get you back on the show again maybe we have so many episodes and we have so many guests that, that's coming in uh so at this point i'd like to thank marvin q lim i'd like to thank thank jacob kabochan would like to thank uh, the tnc team for, uh, led by lloyd duna and um uh apple manansala our good friends uh we'd like to thank all those who are watching uh We'd like to greet them, of course. Shout out to Joby Linsangan Moreno, Nez Argame, uh, of course, Attorney Sheila San Diego. I didn't realize she was also from UST in college. So thank you for watching, for supporting uh, the family business. Um, we will have different topics uh, over the next ep- uh, the next few episodes. So we will have uh, topics on asset protection, family constitution. Family unity. Today we had we tackled family uh, family legacy. So we have such a short time, but uh, hopefully we can discuss many other things in the other shows uh, moving forward. Um, we'd like to invite you to watch uh, all the other shows of TNC and uh, the family business. Of course, this will be every Saturday, 4 p.m. Um, Next Saturday, that's September 5, we'd like to invite you again, uh, same time. Uh, we will be having very exciting speakers again, and also very, um, hopefully, once once we have them, we will tell everybody uh, in in the uh, public so you can, you can watch and you can get the links. So with that, if you are interested, for example, if you're a family business and then you're looking for, uh, like, people you'd like to consult, uh, we can refer people to you. You can just contact me at uh, Nato Agbayani in my business advisor page. I have two, two accounts, so you go to the business advisor page or you can email me at premier uh, brand management at gmail. All right, or you can message me also in any of my accounts. And um, if we can help you, if we can refer you to people, we, we, we premier family business consulting, uh, uh, offers uh, a free consultation um, for families in business who are having problems with the pandemic right now. Uh, this is part of their family biz synergy program, so uh, we can we can refer you to that program. And um, 
you can call me uh, at my phone. It's 0917-865-6762. So uh, on the screen, we have uh, the email, premierbrandmanagement at gmail. You can reach me through that uh, if you need, uh, if you have questions on family business. And hopefully, um, we will inspire more families in business to watch. Join us next time uh, so we can have uh, a great discussion. So. Hopefully, we will have more questions in the near future. If you have questions, just send it over email or just contact me through Natog Bayani, the business advisor page. So with that, uh, we'd like to thank everybody who has joined us today. Thank you for joining the world premiere of the family business with Natog Bayani. Um, next week, join us again. Uh, we will announce the, the guests uh, for family business with that we'd like to go into a commercial break again um, again thank you very much uh, before we go we'd like to say that family business is everybody's business and for our word for the day um, we we get this from the scriptures from psalm 127 it says um, unless the lord builds the house the laborers labor in vain so uh, ladies and gentlemen, we need God on our side uh, for our families in business. We need we need uh, the grace of God to keep going. So, in especially in this pandemic. So, with that, we'd like to thank you. We'll go into a commercial break. We'll go back to the main channel, the the new channel, TNC. Again, thank you. Remember, family business is everybody's business. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.